Some of our old TV favorites are just dated. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 reasons America's Next Top Model hasn't aged well. For this list, we're looking at the main reasons why Tyra Banks' popular reality show hits different when watched today, from toxic behavior to downright discrimination. Number 10. Tyra's Behavior When people first watched the show in 2003, you took issue with Tyra's behavior. Be quiet! Hey, but but anybody be quiet! Look, that's what is I'm wrong with you! Hit, you're not Stop it! I have never in my life yelled at a girl like this! America's Next Top Model was a novelty at the time, and it's possible people categorized certain issues as just part of the modeling industry. However, re-watching the series through today's eyes, you might find yourself interpreting certain incidents differently, with some critiques of contestants coming off as downright offensive. For example, this scenario where a girl was mocked for not wanting to fix the gap in her teeth. Okay, up next is Danielle. So Danielle, you went to the dentist, but you refused to have your gap closed. Do you really think you can have a CoverGirl contract with a gap in your mouth? Yeah, why not? This is all people see. It's Easy Reads Beautiful CoverGirl. It's not marketable. But Tyra Banks' behavior and her allowance of her fellow judges' behaviors are now being observed more closely. Well, I guess she just left the gap wide open for another girl, baby. I agree. Particularly striking is the way Banks treated the show as the ultimate gift to contestants. Case in point, the infamous Tiffany incident. I was rooting for you! We were all rooting for you! How dare you! Learn something from this! Number 9. Shading the Intellectuals Please, I admire your intelligence. I think you are so smart. But one thing with that intelligence is it can intimidate people. And there's a way to use that intelligence in a way that doesn't feel like you're maybe putting down other people or sounding derogatory. America's Next Top Model included contestants from all walks of life. Plenty put off their studies or plan to continue their studies post-show. Many who were pursuing this path were discouraged from education as a primary focus and instead pushed to put all their attention on a modeling career. Cycle 1 contestant Elise was subjected to this, as she planned on going to medical school and was called uppity for her ambition. I know that medical school is hard work. How could I possibly not be aware of that? And secondly, how dare you imply that I'm uppity because I want to be a lifesaver and you don't. Then there was Cycle 19, where all the contestants were enrolled in higher education, which served as a sort of last chance platform to launch a modeling career rather than continue their chosen educational paths. Kara, you won four challenges. That is amazing. You know what that means? If you win America's Next Top Model, that's $40,000 extra for scholarship money for you. Number 8. Personal Tragedy as Entertainment Unfortunately, everyone loves a good sob story, and it's a core aspect of all reality TV. I just can't get this whole kiss thing out of my head. It was deeper to me than just being gay. I feel personally uncomfortable with intimacy with men. America's Next Top Model seemed to take advantage of some contestants' personal tragedies. In a few instances, the show seemed to force certain models to face their demons, seemingly for the sake of so-called good TV. I was like, completely shocked. I don't know if I can handle this. <laughs> Just take Cycle 4 contestant Kaylin, who found out that a childhood friend had passed away while she was filming the show. Today was probably the worst day I've had since I've been here. You know, I find out that one of my friends at home has died. It's really hard to have a friend just ripped away from you and you not even see it coming. She questioned her strength and was then faced with an inappropriately timed graveyard photo shoot, during which she was encouraged to use her tragedy to get a good photo. I want you to channel all your energy into this. It's, it's acting. I want you to even take all your nerves and take all of that and turn it into just like anger. Despite her objections, Cycle 15 contestant Kayla was pressured to kiss a man during a shoot, despite her anxiety towards men as a result of sexual abuse trauma. When I was 11, I um, was sexually assaulted. And this whole challenge freaks me out. I don't want to kiss them. I don't want to interact with them. They scare me, and I really don't want to do it. Number 7. Putting Contestants in Danger I was so embarrassed, thinking, oh man, I messed it up, I blew it. America's Next Top Model has aired for over 20 seasons, so keeping things fresh and not repetitive has obviously been difficult. However, some photo shoots and challenges have been downright hazardous. Ah! Oh Lord, the baby girl! The girls in Cycle 6 had to wear the highest of heels and walk the catwalk. Go down. 
Contestant Kari was eliminated after falling repeatedly, and Danielle actually sprained her toe because of the ordeal. Oh. You okay? Other challenges have included posing in frigid waters, hanging from building rooftops, and walking on a number of unstable runways. I take my first step, and I was like Gumby on a conveyor belt. Number six, pressure to be nude. In more than one season, contestants had to pose nude in at least one photo shoot. Robin, you were supposed to have a nude photo shoot. We don't have a photo for you this week, and why is that? I didn't want to feel uncomfortable. Um, my body is mine. I just didn't think that, you know, that is what I needed to do in order to get ahead. However, the competing models were not all comfortable with the idea. Cycle 7's very first episode featured a nude photo shoot in front of all the other contestants. When the theme was announced, the crowd was visibly divided, with some girls excited and others shaken. Today, you girls are going to be shooting nude. Eighteen-year-old Ginger expressed her moral opposition, and when she was first called upon to pose, she refused. I'm conservative. It, I think it's wrong to expose your private parts for people to see, and I just can't do it. The second time around, after some coaxing from the girls, she came onto the set clutching onto her towel for dear life. Hesitant girls were subject to criticism from both fellow contestants and judges. Others, on the other hand, were shamed for past images or sex work. Ginger only took two pictures. I don't think it's fair to everybody else. I feel that she should get automatically eliminated. Number five, treatment of disabilities. America's Next Top Model has had more than one contestant with a disability. I have a degenerative disease, retinitis pigmentosa, and eventually I will be completely blind. However, the show made no concessions for these individuals, and often seemed to use said disabilities to create drama. Cycle 3's Amanda Swafford revealed she was legally blind and had a degenerative condition. Never look down. Do you wear glasses? Do you wear contacts? I have an eye disease. I'm legally blind. I'm assuming in around five years I'm going to be completely blind. She was told she would have to find some ways to overcome it in order to continue in the modeling industry. Nonetheless, this is something you will have to do however you can overcome it. Cycle 9's Heather Kuzmik was revealed to have Asperger's syndrome, a condition on the autism spectrum. Asperger's syndrome is the Basically, like, it's described as a mild version of autism. It also includes the person being very awkward in social situations. The other girls in the house clearly bullied her, although Kuzmik has said there were also civilized exchanges. Heather, I think her disability gives her a lot of leg up. She gets a big pity call from everyone, and I don't know if she deserves it. Number four, normalizing toxic behavior. So this is for the guys. Let's try and be interested without literally grabbing her butt. Unfortunately, the kind of negative drama that makes for entertaining television is not necessarily healthy for those living it. America's Next Top Model leans into this, as many contestants endured inappropriate behavior over the seasons, only to be told it was part of the industry. Cycle 7 contestant Jada hit an emotional roadblock when she had to film a commercial that required her to kiss a racist male model. First of all, you can't cry because we don't have time to fix your makeup. I'm sorry. Jada did actually kiss him, despite her trepidation, only to be criticized for her performance and eliminated. Cycle 4 contestant Kenya was subjected to sexual harassment during a photo shoot. I kind of get into it, and I hear Martini moaning. Uh. I feel him, like, breathing on me, touching me, and it's not comfortable at all. Following this, she worried about whether or not she hid her discomfort well enough during the shoot. If that's part of the industry, America's Next Top Model had a big enough platform to push for that to change. I know that it's not about being comfortable, but there is a line that I feel was crossed, and I hope that doesn't come out in my picture when I go to panel. Number three, LGBTQ discrimination. America's Next Top Model did include diverse contestants over the seasons, many of whom were part of the LGBTQ plus community. I'm having a fun time. I'm meeting a lot of girls. No, but Isis, I thought she, she looked a little manly. However, they weren't always met with acceptance by fellow models and judges. 
Isis King of Cycles 11 and 17 was a transgender contestant on the show. My mind was like, what, girl? How'd you, ain't this supposed to be a girl competition? How did you get through the door? Though she was met with a mostly favorable response from judges, her fellow contestants did not quite accept her and could be seen laughing at her or pointing out the alleged unfairness of the situation. If I have to get along with Isis, I will. But then again, if it comes between me and my goal, I'll stop that man right out of the competition. And their jeers were aired with no apparent repercussions. Cycle 1's Ebony Haith was the first openly gay contestant on America's Next Top Model. Fellow contestant Robin Manning created tension as she was deeply religious and opposed to Ebony's sexuality. I don't personally like agree with it. Can you tell me why you don't agree with it? I mean, just because, you know, I don't agree with, you know, you know, lesbian and gay relationships. But, I mean, I can't judge you. Number two, cultural appropriation and black or brown face. Though the show appears to be inclusive of all cultures and races, America's Next Top Model seems to favor the quote-unquote blank slate androgynous or ethnically ambiguous model. And Noelle, we're making you into a traditionally African woman with a head wrap and everything. Ethnicity is treated as something foreign or exotic, as can be seen in multiple photo shoots featuring representations of foreign countries or their inhabitants. Think about Go Egypt, on. the people, what they've been through. Aaron was lost. Cycle 13's Hapas, or mixed race photo, shoot is a prime example of this, as the models were essentially wearing blackface makeup and traditional ethnic costumes to pose in a sugarcane field. Hold it. Nice. Beautiful. Chin up. I don't even know who this girl is. Who is this girl I'm shooting? I don't even recognize her. Cycle 3 contestant Yaya DaCosta fought for her right to represent her ethnicity in an authentic fashion, only to be criticized by judges come panel time. There's a different way of explaining yourself and being defensive and you're being very defensive, and it's not attractive. Just because we had a talk about, you know, Afrocentricity before, and it's kind of misunderstood. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, obsession with weight. Some people think that America's not ready for plus-size models. I'm here to break that norm. One of the biggest issues in the fashion industry is sizeism, and as such, it's been a recurring issue on America's Next Top Model. Though some of the models were brought on specifically because they were plus-sized or full-figured, others were criticized by fellow models and judges when they ate too much or appeared to put on any amount of weight. What's more, in more than one instance, skinniness was equated with healthiness. I think the biggest concern with Cassie for me was um, the size of her hips. I just want to measure your thighs just to see where we're at. Normally we like about no more than 35. But Cycle 3's Cassie Grisham admitted to vomiting after eating and trying to lose as much weight as possible to attain her modeling dreams. I don't consider myself bulimic because I don't throw up after everything I eat. But just people are like, oh my god, Cassie is bulimic here, she's throwing up. I, I can't even remember the last time I threw up. Cycle 4's Kenya was openly ridiculed for her slight weight gain and was subjected to photo shoots as the sin of gluttony and later as an elephant. Everybody else has these sexy little animals, but I get to be the big fat elephant. Ugh, why do I keep getting stuck with these fat, like, characters? What is going on? Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.